live. I'm trying to zoom out and it's too <laughs> it's too responsive for me to zoom out good. Nope, smaller, smaller, smaller. There we go. Ah, okay, and I'm just gonna do the uh, ritual waiting for YouTube to catch up with me. And that sounds pretty good. Uh, good morning, everybody. Well, morning for me. Uh, good live coding day, I guess. I uh, I know the audio is good. I'll just unplug that so you don't get a little bit of an echo. Ah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Robbie says, starting with Twitch and there's YouTube. Good morning for everybody or afternoon or wherever you are. So today I'm introducing myself on behalf uh, of you. Say thank you to me. Uh, thanks for joining. All right, today, my glasses are smudged. Today we're continuing with the project that we've been working on for a while. Um, and just if you need a little refresher, the end goal of this project is for me to automate part of my job, um, or at least semi-automate it. Uh, and that part of my job is where I read the Kaggle forum posts every morning. I read all of them that aren't on competitions, basically. Um, that's a lot of forum posts and it's getting to be many more over time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So if we check out, uh, I can go back to this one later. Um, Metacaggle. Excuse me. Excuse me again. Sorry about that. If we check out Metacaggle uh, and we look at the number of forum posts over time, uh, you can see that it is growing very quickly uh, and more quickly than an individual person can um, spend time reading all of them. So um, how am I going to do this? My plan is to um, create a... <laughs> Med says, bless you. Thank you. I feel like there might be more sneezes coming on. I'm in sort of a, a sneezy, uh, sneezy place in my life right now. I should probably see an allergist. Anyway. Um, so what are we going to do? There's a number of things I want to do, but the first, uh, first step for me, and I'll just look at those cause I know that it bothers people if there's notifications just sort of hanging out. Um, the first step is to spend some time. Where's my, uh, here we go. Here's my notes on the, on the project. Uh, my first step is to figure out uh, a way to summarize the various topics. Uh, hi, Abiola. Uh, summarize the various topics that people are talking about. So the things that I'm interested in are are people suddenly talking about new things? Is there a lot of discussion around something that people have been talking about for a while? Um, is there something that people aren't talking about anymore? So like, is there a topic that was super popular that isn't popular anymore? Um, Cause all of those are very interesting things. And right now I sort of carry around a lot of that information in my head in a very unstructured way. Uh, Cause again, I, I, I just read them. And that's not super helpful um, if somebody has like a quick question um, and then they have to talk to me physically. And uh, I don't know if you knew this, but the Kaggle team is all over. We've got people in Australia, we've got people in uh, New York. Uh, I'm in, I'm in Seattle. We've got a, quite a few people in Seattle and California. So, uh, it's not necessarily guaranteed that I'm going to have access or availability to a, uh, people aren't going to necessarily be able to ask me if they have a question and then they have to read the forums and it just takes forever. And that's, that's no good. Hi, Arsad. Uh, so can we do this summarization, this classification, this uh, high level overview of what people are talking about automatically? Um, yes, is my, my firm belief. I think that we absolutely can do it. Uh, and the question is how? Uh, and so far we tried um, Brown clustering, which is a statistically based method um, based on sort of co-occurrence and frequency statistics and it didn't work very good. Um, we also tried keyword extraction as sort of a pre-processing step prior to the brown clustering, and that worked really great. So we might work a little bit with more of the, um, Yake was the algorithm that we were using, which stands for yet another keyword extraction method, I guess. Um, and that one was unsupervised and that was pretty nice. So the thing that I want to try now is an embedding based mess um, method, um, that we can do clustering on. So 
last week we spent some time working on um, figuring out how to fine tune an existing word to vec embedding. Oop, too big. And I actually went back and I spent some time working on that and I got it working uh, with a little bit of help from uh, Ryan Chesler, uh, who sometimes comes to the, the live stream. So thank you, Ryan. Uh, and what we ended up, uh, and I think there's actually a more recent version an hour ago. You should be done. Okay, yeah, the more recent version was done. Um, so I have a more recent version, and what we ended up doing was using GenSim, which is a topic modeling library, um, doing a little pre-processing, tokenization, getting things lowercase, um, and then fine-tuning existing word to vec uh, vectors based on the Google News uh, corpus, and these are 300 length vectors, so they're not, they're not the biggest possible vectors, but they're a pretty good size. Uh, and then uh, after we did fine tuning, I saved out two copies. So one is in the GenSim format. So if we wanted to keep working with GenSim, we could use that. And the other is in the sort of default word to vec format. So if we wanted to use uh, word to vec, we could use that. And we should, uh, if you can see, here are the vanilla, I guess, uh, word to vec embeddings. Uh, so we have uh, 300 is the dimension of our embedding. So for each word, we have a vector of length 300. Um, or I guess a tensor of depth one and length 300, uh, or matrix of length one and depth 300. Uh, and we have uh, 355,000 words in our vocabulary, more or less, uh, which is a pretty good chunk. And we can see some of those words. So P, A, I, um, these might be used in describing probability methods, potentially. Uh, the and of is you in for it that's this etc 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 and when we go a little bit further down we can see things like block quote team uh solution machine kernels which is um where we write code on kaggle uh predictions information leaderboard another good kaggly word uh that probably is used in a different context in kaggle than it is elsewhere so we've got our embeddings uh and ryan who i mentioned earlier also went through and did uh uh, a little bit of exploration of the tuned embeddings, looking at uh, words that are most similar to other words that you might see used in a Kaggle context. So for image, some of the most common uh, words associated with it are pixel, pixels, patch, photo, 32 by 32, so dimensions of an, of an image file, um, RGB, patches, masks, and pictures, which all I think uh, make a lot of sense in a computer vision context and you might not find in sort of like news discussions of what an image is in general. Uh, so that's step one. Step two is that we want to do clustering. Um, and I'm doing a little bit of thinking and thinking about sort of what is clustering. So in clustering, we have all of our points in some dimensional space. Um, in this case, well, okay, I'll get back to that. In some dimensional space, and then based on the distance between different points in space, we can be like, oh, these points tend to be very close together. Oh, these points tend to be cl close together. We think that these are probably two separate clusters, um, is the general idea of clustering. What we have now are word vectors of length 300. If I want to take um, a post, right, and um, determine which posts are more similar to each other, we're going to need to do a little bit more work. So if I can't do this right thing, oh, word hard, right now I can't do the same thing where I have a word and I look for words that are similar with posts, right? So far we have embeddings that work on the um, uh, on the word level, not on the sentence level. So what we need to do today is find a way to take the, well, we might use the embeddings that we've trained or those might be like a tool for our toolbox to use a little bit later on. Taking the word embeddings we have or the text that we have and from that creating uh, sentence embeddings or like, like text embeddings or document embeddings. Um, so there's a couple ways we could do this. One is that we could use like straight up 
document or sentence embedding techniques. So the thing that I had up here was, uh, we read this paper a while ago. Oop, nope, too far. Uh, we read this paper, nope, 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 nope. It's in here somewhere. There we go. We read this paper a while ago. It's a, a Google research paper about universal sentence encoders. Um, and this is a TensorFlow module that takes in text and gives you out an embedding for that text uh, based on their, their pre-trained model. Uh, so what this does is it takes in a span of text and not just a word, so multiple words together. Excuse me and casts all of those spans of text in the same multi-dimensional space. So you could do clustering directly onto these. Uh, Pradav says, sentence to vector them? Yeah, that's definitely one option. Uh, and Med says, how are you going to handle out of vocabulary words? Uh, both really good questions. Uh, so my hope is because I have trained the um, I've done some fine tuning. If we use word vectors, my hope is that because we've done some fine tuning of the word vectors on a corpus of the type of words, uh, the corpus of the type of documents that we're looking at, and there's a lot of genre specific cues, we're not going to have too many out of vocabulary words um, besides like people's names. Um, so right now I'm just going to like ignore them. Um, yeah, sentence to vector is definitely uh, a good other option. Um, there's also something called Doctivec that does the same thing for documents. Um, and just as, you know, a word vector takes all of the richness and complex complexity of a language and schloop, turns it into uh, a little, uh, you know, string of numbers to represent a word uh, in all of its uses. Uh, Sentence to vector does the same thing with a sentence and doc to vec does the same thing with a document. And they are, they do reduce complexity and sort of are very lossy as ways to think about language, but they're much easier to handle algorithmically, uh, which is the benefit. I don't know, as a linguist, I'm a little bit like, mm -mm, I, don't, I don't love it. I want it to be more complex, more complexity. Um, but also I do want this to, to work and be fast, so. Um, Ryan says, I think there's a way to do Doctivec in Jensen uh, that would borrow from our Kaggle trained embeddings. Yeah, that might be our, our best option. So I've also been doing some poking around looking at various uh, clustering techniques. And we talked about these quite a bit in uh, the sort of original project layout and the types of uh, clusterings that we were looking at, oh, actually I don't have spectral clusterings in here, um, or hierarchical clusters, brown clusters, those didn't work great for us, uh, DB span, and we'd probably want to use um, hierarchical DB scan here, because I, I think that there is probably a hierarchical relationship between topics and posts. So on the broadest sense, you can think about each of the different forums. So the forums for the different competitions, um, data sets, learn, product feedback are probably going to have similar topics within them. Uh, and then going down, uh, I could imagine, you know, for example, bugs as a topic, and maybe there's bugs with kernels, maybe there's bugs with data sets that people are reporting, um, or feature launches as a topic, and maybe there's feature launches for kernels and data sets, and so on and so forth. So I think that there's probably there is probably a hierarchical structure in these topics. Um, and I think that modeling it hierarchically will be more helpful for my colleagues because different people work on different parts of the site uh, and relatively few people want every topic that people are talking about. Uh, probably like Ben and Anthony care. So, um, uh, Pranav says fast text embeddings can handle out of vocabulary. So my understanding, and you guys can correct me on this, my understanding on the way that they can handle out of vocabulary things is that they are based on like um, morphology and subwords. And I don't, do they handle names well? Because I wouldn't imagine that at least in English, most names are not going to be morphologically decomposable. So like Heather, Maybe at some point was like Heath plus one who, like that ER ending. But I think if you tried to like use that information to embed the name Heather now, you would get not very useful results. I don't know, y'all can correct me on that. 
Uh, Med says, why not try using the mean of words as a baseline? Like a mean across all the... So just to, just to understand what you're asking. So the two ways that I could imagine doing mean are you have... Actually, there's a lot of ways I can imagine doing mean. Um, you have all your word vectors and you create a matrix from them and then you take the mean of each column. So you sort of stack them up and then squash them down, basically. Um, means in embedding space, I have been told. I haven't played around with them much because people told me not to. Um, the problem with them is if I have you know, three points that are, or four points that are really too close together in this space, they're going to have the same mean as four points that are really far apart from each other in the same space, uh, along the same vectors as long as they scale. Um, so you might end up doing too much dimensionality reduction there and losing too much information. Uh... Ryan says, oh, Ryan says, you can average embeddings across the words since the text generally isn't too long. That's proven to be useful for classification. Does that work? I was told not to at some point in the past, and so I just haven't because it was somebody I trusted. Um, so averaging embeddings across the words, would it be that, like, you take all the words, you put them in a matrix, and you take the average for uh, the rows? so that you maintain the first dimension. Actually, I guess if we're doing it in the way that a neural architecture usually is, each word would be a column and we'd average across rows. So we're maintaining the first dimension, second dimension, third dimension, fourth dimension. That could work. Um, yeah, let's try that. Let's give that, let's give that, uh, Let's give that a try. Let's see if that works. Um, and hey, if it doesn't work, then we've learned something. Oh, it's blank. Oh, there we go. Uh, so I'm going to, this is a, a, the embedding file that I created earlier, and I am going to create a kernel using that data set. Um, mm, that is inappropriate. Hello world. And I am going to remove that comment. Give me just a second to do that. Uh, typing is hard. Uh, this is good because it gives my kernel time to uh, start correctly. Nope. Nope. How do I get to my own video that I'm doing right now? That seems that should be straightforward. Oops, sorry. And remove. Okay. Uh, interesting. Oh, this is probably just like, we don't know how to uh, show you what these things look like uh, in our little, yeah, uh, I think we're getting these errors because uh, these types of thingadoogles. <laughs> I think we're getting this error because it doesn't know about the file type dot model. Um, it should be fine. It should work perfectly well. Uh, Robbie says, instead of using mean, use mode. Hmm. Yeah, that would help with like our idea where small words and big words, if they're on the same dimensions, would be similar. Uh... Ryan says, it's not good, but it's easy. You have to assume that across all 300 embeddings, you'll have some variation across the list uh, of only 200 or so words. Okay, that makes sense. And actually I would probably wanna do, if we're averaging across multiple words, I would probably want to do keyword extraction first so that the total number of words is smaller so that it's faster. Um, so, uh, get forum posts, extract keywords, uh, average embeddings for keywords for each post is the idea that we have so far. Um, Shashank says, subwork tokenization can handle a majority of out of vocabulary, but not all, because the merge algorithm for subwork is based on frequency. Uh, basically, nouns may still remain as out of vocabulary. Yeah, that um, that gels with my intuitions and understanding. Uh, Frida says, you're a great instructor. Oh, thank you. 
Uh, Mel, I guess they're talking about getting the mean of each column of the embedding of the words, composing the sentence or document. Yeah, that's that's also my understanding. Uh, Med says, you could also try a TFIDF weighted average of embeddings. I don't want to do TFIDF. I don't want to. Um, the biggest problems for me for TFIDF are that uh, it's kind of slow, <laughs> for one thing. Um, and also, uh, it can reduce the amount of interpretability. So the thing that I'm probably going to get out. Okay, 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 let's think it through. So we have our clusters based on our documents. How do we know what's in each of the clusters? I think the most reasonable way would be to take the most frequent keywords after keyword extraction from each of the clusters. So our clusters are labeled by a vector of the keywords that occur most frequently in the posts that are in that cluster. But frequency isn't going to take into account uniqueness. So if every post uses the word kernels, then it's going to show up in the labels of every cluster. So that's not super helpful. So I could do the list of unique keywords, but also it's the combination that could be useful. Um, because if the word cluster, if the word kernels is occurring with bug or the word kernels is occurring with like, thank you, fantastic. Those are two different clusters. And I do want to know that they're both about kernels. So I think the like top five most frequent keywords will work, especially because keywords should remove stop words. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I've walked it, uh, walked it through for me. Uh, Anurak says, uh, dimension reduction using UMAP. Uh, yeah, we could, but I mean, if we're taking the average, then our we're only gonna have 300 dimensions and we have quite a few posts. Um, uh, yeah, we may need it. I guess we'll see is my answer is my answer to that. Uh, let's try something. Let's try to get something that works first. <laughs> That's my first priority. Uh, and then figure out how to get it slightly better. So we have already actually done the yake thing. Um, did I, did I put any of my, my Yake pre-processing stuff uh, in a, let's see, so here's the code, keywords, Yake, sample post, return sentences. Um, actually, what I'm gonna do, cause I keep using these selection of, um, I keep using the selection of things is I'm actually gonna create a, Pew, pew, pew. Uh, I'm going to create a script kernel uh, that has all of these functions in it so I can import the script and then have the functions in my, is this a notebook or a script? Okay, yeah, oh, this is a script. Oh, it's the light thing for scripts, that's right. I keep forgetting that this exists now. Um, so I'm gonna need that, and I'm also gonna need to import all of the things that I need to make that work. Chipoo. Excellent, and I'm gonna call this Yake Helper. Nope, nope, Funks. I'm gonna download this. All right, uh, so let me commit that. Oh, wait, wait, actually, before I commit, uh, let me make sure that this is a utility script. So I'm gonna make it a utility script and then I'm gonna commit it. Um, oh, do I have an error? What is the error? Go to it. Nope, nope. 
Mm. Why did it fail? Mm. Oh, right, 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 right. Because I was talking about the brown clustering stuff as well, and I do not care about that. Uh, so I can get rid of this. Okay, excellent. I think that's the only time I refer to it, hopefully. Uh, I can get rid of this because I'm not actually doing the clustering. So now this should work. And then I can add it to my other kernel and then I can stop copying and pasting these functions. Uh, all right, what's the problem now? Let's look at the log. Module not found, no module named Yake. Oh, that's right. I think I need to import Yake. And I think pip should work. Is this a magic? I know that Jupyter magics won't work in scripts. They'll cause it to crash when they compile. Uh, I don't actually need to run it. I need to commit it. Uh, Rogel says, I'm feeling lost in the sea. Text embeddings. Oh, I'm just uh, running through things. Uh, pretty quickly. Line one, syntax error. Okay. Ugh. Okay, yeah, that definitely is a magic. Because it's a script, can I, can I just, is this gonna work? Actually, I still don't care about running it. I still only care about committing it. All right, looks like this one also has a bug. This will in the long time save me, save me time. Syntax error, pip install. Oh, I didn't actually. No, I did. Mm, syntax error, install. Okay. Um. All right. I'm going to take a little little break before I Google how to pip install in scripts. Um, I think there may, uh, Shashank says, I think there may be a problem with keyword-based post vectorization as some of the posts might not have any of those words. Ah, excellent point. Um, Yake should extract at least one keyword per post. Um, and if it doesn't, then I think I am okay with having, with excluding posts that don't have keywords because people are just like, thanks. That's not a post that I care deeply about. Uh, Jupanov says, are you trying to find the cluster topics unsupervised or are we hard coding uh, certain topics and then trying to find the related words in the corpus? Uh, completely unsupervised. Uh, I want this to be as hands off as possible um, and not require retraining a bunch of things. So yeah, good question. Um, I can try to install the external packages. Da, da, da. Although I don't think this is on pip. And this may or may not work. Let's see. I like these earrings because they go tinkle, 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 tinkle. Okay. Well, anyway. So the thing that we want to do are... The things that we want to do are, uh, what would we call this? Forum post embeddings. Uh, we wanna create one embedding for each forum post. Uh, and there are some things that we do need to do regardless. Uh, import paint. Yeah, yeah, we wanna treat, uh, we wanna treat the, Oh, still thinking. We want to treat the um, forum posts as uh, a data frame. We want to treat the data 
where the forum posts are as a data frame because it's tabular data. So we do want to use pandas for that. We probably want to read the embeddings into a NumPy matrix because that's going to be more efficient. And I do need to uh, add the data set that has the data in it, huh? Uh, mega Kaggle, meta Kaggle. There we go. Add that. Okay. Are you done adding? Status started. Well, okay. <laughs> we'll see. Um, uh, Python install package in script. Uh, installing Python module within code. Mm, you can use something like this. Okay. I might try that instead. I think that might be a little bit easier than trying to wrestle it, wrestle it, trying to wrestle with a custom package installation. Except I don't think it's in pip. Um, I think it's in, uh, I think it's only on GitHub. Excuse me. Uh, and you need to give the entire Git URL. So for the, uh, for the packages, oops. Uh, for the packages specifically, you shouldn't need to give the entire URL. You should just need to give the username and then repo name. Uh, there was an error. Oh, <laughs> fancy that. Uh, I'm, I'm not surprised. Uh, this, this particular component has some issues and uh, we're aware of it and are working to address them. I don't want to pip install. I want to GitHub install. Whoop. from GitHub. That's the one. <laughs> Need to use the proper get URL. So I did that. Pip install. Da, da, da. Um, all right, so but these are all going to be things that work in the shell and not in a script. I promise this will eventually save us time. Uh, install package from GitHub in Python script. Install from GitHub, but I, I want it, no, no, shoo. I want it in the, nope, nope, nope. Mm, that's not gonna be helpful. Oh, with dependencies, packaging, pip script installer. How to use GitHub as a PyPI server. Uh, how to install additional packages for Ruru. Aha! Uh, Goklanoth says um, os.system pip install. That makes sense. I vaguely remember having done this in the past. Do I need to import OS? Or is that built in? I think I need to import OS because I remember that every time I work with blobs, I need to report that. Let's see if this one will work. Mm, Kumar says, uh, should work. Previous one had space between the exclamation point and the uh, code. Just now, import yake, no module found named yake. Hmm. Uh, so it didn't run this, maybe? Hmm. Okay, so I did import OS. I mean, I can try it without the exclamation point, but I don't think that's the error because I think the exclamation point installation is a magic, a Jupyter magic, and I don't think it's going to work when we try to run it as a, a dot .py script. And I keep trying to run this. We can try. My gut instinct is that it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah, invalid syntax. Okay. Uh, hmm. Uh, run os.system before importing. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'm just bad at looking at things in the order they occur. That's, uh, thank you. <laughs> this is why having friends when you're programming is very nice. All right. It's going to work now. It's taking a bit, so that's good. It's doing the cloning, which is also good because that's what we were having problems with. Um, so I think this is going to work now, which is nice. No. Oh. Okay, this time I think I know what the problem is. I think I need to turn on the internet in order to uh, pip install things. Preparing, it's gonna take a minute. Uh, a riveting, riveting live code of just doing some like code modularization. All right. Um, Shashank says go to the console at the bottom and do a pip install. So that would install it in my current environment. But when I run, uh, when I commit on Kaggle, it actually commits in a separate VM. And so because I hadn't run that command in the new VM, uh, Yake wouldn't have been installed in the new VM. So the commit would fail even though it ran locally in the editor. Hey, we did it. <laughs> High five. Excellent. Okay, so now, uh, and I'll make this public just in case y'all want to look at it. Uh, nope. Mm, public. Okay, make public. Save. There we go. Um, just in case you guys want to take a look at it. But now the bonus is that I should be able to file, add, or up. Nope, that's a data source utility script looking at my work and I can add this and then I can import it and then everything's going to be great uh, and I don't have to uh, rewrite these functions every time I can just import it which is nice uh, Arun says what's the goal uh, well right now we are importing a little module well a little helper script that we wrote uh, that has a lot of the yake helper Funks. I'm just gonna import everything. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Okay, excellent. Uh, so we want to. Where uh, is? We want to get the form posts, we want to extract the keywords, and then we're going to average embeddings for the keywords in each post. Um, so getting the form posts, we also had code to write that somewhere in one of these many, many, many uh, different things. That one's the clustering. We don't care about that. There we go. Uh, and this is just going to take the first 1,000, or sorry, the last 1,000 forum posts. So we're not going to, we're not going to do everything uh, all at once. And then from there, we're going to extract keywords. And I believe that the function for that was yakealperfunct. Actually, you know what? Instead of importing star, I'm going to. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So I was trying to figure out why I didn't. I'm just going to refactor this a little bit. Um, the reason that I'm doing this is so that I can do yay comp or funks. Uh, is so that I can do yhf dot and then see all the, um, I think, three functions in my uh, uh, helper file that I've done, my helper script, because I don't remember what they're called. And this is a good way for me not to have to remember that. Uh, and this is going to take a while because it's doing a lot of library importing and it's actually downloading uh, and installing the Yake package. Um, and it, again, we don't have to do that every time now. We can just import our little, our little helper script and it'll do it for us. Very handy. All right. Uh, and then we are going to want to extract the keywords and the function for that was keywords underscore yake. 
using the sample posts. Oop. No module named Yake. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I do have to do it every time myself. Interesting. All right, so first we're gonna install Yake and then we're gonna do the rest of it. All right. Uh, Arun says, that's cool and extremely helpful. Oh, I hope you're talking about the helper modules. Um, the utility scripts is something that I have been asking for very politely for a very long time and I'm extremely happy that we have it now. It's it's so nice. Um, and I would encourage everybody to use it because it's, you know, it's just good best practice. Okay, so that is gonna take a s oh. 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 Y'all have figured it out. I think that uh, the reason we got that error is actually not because we uh, needed to install Yake in this, but because the attempt to install failed because we don't have internet access and the kernel that we imported requires internet access to go and fetch the package and then download it into our local environment. I think that's it. Ooh. I think once we get this all set up, it should be relatively straightforward. I mean, famous last words, but uh, we'll find out. Okay, so the next thing that we would want to do is, I believe it was called keyword underscore yake, but I can't use autocomplete yet because it's not done importing, which should hopefully happen with no errors. Um, and then we called it sample posts. So let's call this keywords. Uh, and then once we have extracted the keywords from the sample posts, uh, this, oop, don't want to actually do that. So this is for tokenizing the data uh, so that it is in a list where every item in the list are is a list of the keywords from a specific um, post which I think we actually still do want to do. I think we do want to tokenize. Uh, and I believe it was yake helper functions. Uh, there we go. Oh, it worked now because it's done running. Uh, so tokenizing after yake, and then we want to do that with the keywords. Uh, so this should extract all of our keywords and tokenize. Look how little code this is. Because we put it all in a, a different thing. <laughs> it's like the, here's one I made earlier of coding. So that should work. Um, mm, that did not work. There's no attribute keyword yake. Well, that's a problem with this. So, let's see. Oh. Oh, oh, it was me. I was the problem. Uh, in value gen, I don't know what this means, but it seems to be still running and not giving an error. It's just some warning, so uh, we'll take a look. Yeah, no, the, the problem is I left off the S of keywords underscore yake and said it was keyword underscore yake. Uh, and that is probably because I didn't have autocomplete. <laughs> um, Hacks314 said, what clustering techniques are you gonna cover? Um, if we get there, uh, I'd like to work with uh, spectral clustering. But right now I think we're mostly gonna be doing uh, document slash uh, forum post embeddings. <laughs> Uh, and everyone's like, you're missing the S. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag between uh, the chat and where I am in time. So unfortunately, some of your very good help takes a little bit to get to me. Uh, yeah. Uh, petition to make internet on by default. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. That is an interesting product suggestion. Uh, yeah, the downside there is that it's more likely to encourage you to do things that aren't easy to reproduce. Um, so if the library I'm downloading every time changes, then I'm not going to be able to reproduce my same my same work. Um, Yeah, I'll think about it. Uh, slash talk to some of the, the product folks. Uh, and I actually don't wanna see all of this output. So I'm gonna hide it uh, when I commit the kernel. I'm also gonna hide it in here. All right, so what do I have now? So now I should have, uh... okay, so now I have the keywords that have been, uh, extracted from the different posts. So this one has logic behind RGB post RGB map token map taken logic. Uh, this one is empty. So we are getting some posts that don't have any keywords in them, um, which let's actually see. So that was one, two, three, four, five. It was the first five posts. So if we look at sample posts, look at the same five and see what that fifth one is that didn't have anything. Thank you, emoji. Yeah, I'm fine with not getting keywords from that. Um, I don't necessarily want to want to include that in my overall view of what people are doing on the site because people at any given time are probably gonna say thank you. So uh, that's okay. Uh, this one, great insight, started working. Insights, detailed analysis, starting working, explore, great share, my detailed analysis, share detail. It's a little bit of repetition. Um, yeah, it might be worthwhile to get the unique keywords for each post so that if there is repetition, it's not going to wait mm. our word embeddings. Yeah, I think unique keywords from each post makes sense. Um, so here we have like question. Mm, there's a lot of repetition here. Interesting. Uh, so I'm wondering if that might be in my, mm, this one, tokenizer, sample data tokenized, making it all lowercase, tokenizing uh, I for each and sample data tokenized. Running it all to lower. That shouldn't be increasing Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Asad says, why not try some bio-inspired clustering techniques in the next live session? Like, um, was it dendritic stuff? Yeah, it might work. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna get to clustering in this live session, so that might be a, a good place to, uh, to start. And I might change the title of the YouTube video. Hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think it makes sense for us to take one word to take. So I think it makes sense for us to take the set of each of these words because I don't think repetition is going to change. Okay. So if someone's like, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Is that, does that feel like a different topic from somebody saying thank you once? My gut instinct is that it is not, and I want to cluster those two things in the same cluster and treat them identically. Um, yeah, so I think it makes sense to take the set of each of these keywords. Um, so there's only, each of them is unique. And then from there do our embeddings and then average across them. Uh, so, how do I do that? <laughs> this is the point where I have to write new code instead of just like shluffling around a bunch of code I had uh, previously. Um, oh, and here's where I have the, the information on spectral clustering. Uh, Python get set of items in a, in a list. That's what I want, exactly. Get list from a set. Uh, how do I get the contents of a set? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 
Da, 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 da. I would use sorted. Okay, so these are lists from sets. I want a set from a list. Uh, get list to set. Set out of a list items. There we go. Uh, I want to cre create a set of all the file names. Uh, you can construct the set di directly set list. In fact, set will work this way with any iterable object. That's kind of full. Uh, interesting. So let's try that. Let's see what happens if I do it with two. Does it maintain the internal hierarchical structure? Well, what would I do? Does it maintain the internal hierarchical structure? Unhashable type list. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to need to loop through it. And this is a good place for list comprehension. So I'm going to try and use list comprehension because I'm trying to get better at Python for uh, two. set two. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the set of the post for post in keywords tokenize and let's just do the first five i think that's gonna work it did not work uh okay <clears throat> uh gpanov says create bigrams then tokenize and then embed um yeah we could i'm gonna try and see chase this one down to the end though and see how it works i could have sworn that that was the right uh uh, list comprehension syntax. Does it need to be lists are iterable? Yeah, lists are iterable. So that shouldn't be the issue. Um, so I'm just going to call this test. giving me the unique letters. That's not what I wanted. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, that's right. Cause I'm giving it one thing. So if I give it multiple things, maybe instead of iterating over the words, it's going to iterate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay. We're cooking with gas now. Excellent. So now we've gotten rid of, okay. So what I did was I gave it a, I gave it a list of words and it iterated over every word in the list instead of giving it a list of lists where it would have iterated over every list individually. Okay, <sighs> I'm finally getting there with this comprehension. And I think the reason this didn't work is that it needs to be assigned or you need to do something with it. It's like a lambda. You can't just do it as a single line. Pretty sure. Excellent. Um, so let's actually do that up here. I'm going to tokenize and let's call this. First of all, we want to do all of them. We don't uh, just want to do the one. And then let's call this keyword sets. Oh, no, I'm retraining Yake. That's that's OK. That's fine. Uh, so then I should be able to look at keyword. Oh, it's not done running yet. Uh, keyword SETS, and let's just look at the first three, uh, and it should be exactly the same as we see here, unless I've messed up very badly, in which case it won't be. Uh, yeah, oh, and people are, are giving me help with the syntax. There's been, like I mentioned, there's a little bit of a lag, so I'm not ignoring you. It's just, uh, yeah, excellent. So now we have all of the unique keywords. So. The, uh, if you're like, list comprehension is my favorite. It's, it's growing on me. Um, I have spent more time programming in R where 
any sort of loops or absolutely not. Uh, the time complexity is horrendous. Everything's already vectorized. You should just vectorize your operations. Um, so anything that sort of like smells like a loop, I'm, I'm getting, getting more comfortable. Okay, so what do we want to do for each word in each? Hmm. Okay, so let's start with just the, the first keyword set. So what we want to do is we want to get the vectors for each of these words where there exists a vector in our word vectors. Yeah. And then create a matrix of those and then average along the matrix. Um, all right. So first thing we need to do is we need to read in this data set that we haven't actually touched yet. And I'm pretty sure it's uh, Kaggle underscore word to vec model is the one that has the matrix that we're interested in. In uh, how, do, how do I read it again? Mm. Well, let's just let's just use pandas. I know it's a little bit more overhead, but um, I'm just gonna do it. So pd dot read. What are my options? Uh, clipboard, Excel, Feather, GBQ, blah, 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 Pickle. It's not that. Sat at table? That might work. Because I don't think it's actually a valid CSV. Um, although we can check if we go back here uh, and I go down to my output. And I actually click good. Uh, yeah, okay, so this isn't a CSV or a TSV, it is a space delimited tabular file. Um, well, it's not a table actually, but we can treat it like a table. It'll be fine. Uh, so I want to, I'm just going to try reading it. I don't think it's going to work. It's in the input and then we want the fine tuning word to vec 2.0 and then we want the kaggle word to vec model i don't think this is gonna work oh oh no 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 stop that stop that stop that stop that i don't want to try and print a very big uh well it might be too late okay there we go um if i had actually actually read it and it just tried to print out a very 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 big text file in um the kernel that will sometimes crash the kernel mm. all right uh it's upset because it's not a table which makes sense so i actually want to get rid of the first row because that's not going to follow the same dimensions um Oh, Med says you can use read CSV and then specify what the separator is, Arun says. So let's try that. Hmm. Let's see if that works. Uh, got an unexpected uh, keyword argument separator. Uh, pandas read in space delimited, delimited file. That's the one I want. Ah, delimiter. It also doesn't think that this is a limiter. Interesting. It seems to have accepted this as input, but it didn't. Um... Hmm. Okay, so it accepted this as an argument. It hasn't given me an uh, an error that it wasn't expecting that argument. But when I did tab complete, it did not know about it. Um, so this might be I don't know deprecated or just like not encouraged. Oh, this is the example that didn't work. Uh... Oh, interesting. So this looks like it's going to be a little bit faster. So let's try that instead. Stop. There we go. Uh, and I also probably am going to want to get rid of the first row because the first row is not going to be the same dimension as the rest of them. So pandas get 
read. No, go away. Uh, pandas first read CSV drop first row. Skip row. Uh, skip rows one. So that should work. All that other mess was just so that they could have the uh, the example uh, and print it out. Let's see. And I'm sure when I look back down to the chat, chat, people will be like, no, Rachel, it's this thing. All right. Oh, everyone's being like, skip rows, ignore header. I'm worried that header might not work because I imagine that header is going to expect one header for each column and we've got 300 columns and two columns worth of header uh, is my guess. Uh, Shashank says, I don't remember the last session, but did we fine tune the word to vec for Metacaggle dataset vocabulary? We did, or rather we tried really hard and did not do a great job of it. Uh, and then I went back and uh, did it off screen because I, it was just easier. Uh, and this one should be available. So if you search for fine tuning word to vec 2.0, um, you should be able to see it. Uh, and Ryan Chesler also did, uh, oh, still thinking, uh, also did some very helpful uh, bug fixes and posted about them. So thank you. Um, Med says, IMO, it's better if you read it in, read it using Jensen. Um, I don't know what I'm going to use to try and uh, do the clustering. And I'm thinking I might actually not use Jensim. So my thought is probably the um, spectral clustering from, I think it's gone, but there's spectral clustering built into scikit-learn and that's a method I was interested in using. Uh, and that's going to expect, not going to expect the Jensim type object because Jensim, it's very highly optimized. So it uses objects that are sort of like its own gensim class of things, like the keyed vectors we worked with last week. Uh, and I don't think that they're just gonna plug and play in scikit-learn. Spectral clustering scikit-learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that this is going to expect uh, applied clustering to a reduction of the normalized Laplacian. In practice, spectral clustering is very useful when the structure of the individual clusters is highly non-convex, which we would expect for language models. Uh, not that these are language models, but for numerical models of language, or more generally, when a measure of center and spread of the cluster is not a suitable description of the complete cluster. Um, for example, when clusters are nested circles on the 2D plane. Uh, let's see, and it is expecting the number of clusters, which is optional, uh, eigensolver, random state, uh, init, affinity, neighbors, degree. Uh, I'm trying to figure out what it wants as the input and it looks like a distance matrix. So that's what we will have uh, when we are done with our embedding squishing. So then we should be able to go directly into uh, spectral clustering from scikit learning, which is why I'm not using the, um, uh, the thing, uh, and it's a little after 10, but I'm having fun. So I think I'm just going to keep going. Um, uh, cause I don't, let me show Cause I had a meeting that was canceled, which means that I can, uh, have a little bit more time. All right. Uh, okay. So we've got our vectors in, uh, if we look at, ooh, nope. Nope. Is vectors a is vectors a Python built in? Should I not have called it vectors? Vectors is probably fine. But vector might be a built in. I wasn't yelled at, so I'm guessing that it's not a built in. That's a problem. Okay, and we can see that this is what I expect. Uh, the first row is the word, and then the rows to the right of it are the uh, 300 dimensions of the embedding for that specific word. Um, so I would, in this projection space, expect the and a to be fairly close to each other. Um, yeah, and these should be sorted by frequency is generally the um, 
convention for word vectors. So the, a, i, to, and and are the most common words, which for an English language data set is extremely reasonable. All right, so what we were doing was we were for each, uh, for each thing, da, da, da. okay, so we can get rid of this. Um, we can get rid of this. So for each keyword, we want to, no, for each post, we want to take the embeddings for all of the unique keywords, which we already have, get the, um, vector for each of those keywords, create a metric matrix of the dimensions 300 by the length of the number of keywords in our extracted keywords and then average them. Okay. Um, uh, Yer says, the day Kaggle integrates real-time collaboration, I'm going to die of happiness. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Um, I don't think it's on the roadmap to be like very soon, uh, but I agree, it would be fantastic. Uh, what kind of session? Uh, this is live coding, I'm just working on a project. Um, Alan says, what do you mean by dimension? Uh, and I could post a link to the notebook, but it's not public yet, so you wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, so uh, dimension is like the size of something for word, vectorization in particular, what word vectorization does is it gives you a set of vectors of a fixed dimension. So in this case, all words have a 300 length vector associated with them. Um, that is a projection down of a co-occurrence matrix, basically, uh, into a 300 dimension space, dimension dimensional space, and then each of those dimensions is um, given each word has a position in each of those dimensions, and then you can do things like um, look at their location in the space relative to each other. And what we're doing is we are taking that information for a uh, you know list of words, and then we're just going to average. Which <laughs> again, I don't know how well that's going to work. I've I've been told not to in the past, so we'll see. Uh... Okay, so what I want to do is, now that I have my vectors, I want to extract the word. Mm. Okay, um, interesting. Interesting. That's not going to work. Yeah. That's not going to work. Yeah, interesting. I just got an autocomplete that, that popped up for that. Uh, and it was weird. Surely this won't work. Yeah, that's definitely not going to work. Um, so I'm trying to get the embedding for... I'm trying to get... Hmm. This is one of those things where I would switch to R if I weren't already uh, committed to a Python workflow. Uh, pandas efficiently get words by efficiently get row by value. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Um, and someone is asking in SQL, extremely reasonable equals equals to select rows, iterable, multiple conditions. Uh, okay, so, but this is going to, mm, okay, so my, okay, 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 so this is making sense to me. I think is lock deprecated? Okay, so this is not going to work the way I'm just pasting it in here, but what we are looking for is in the zeroth column, we are trying to get all the rows where it's in. Um, and let's actually do keyword sets one because that is iterable. Let's see if that works. 
Key error. Okay, that didn't work. Um, key error zero. Oh, that's right. Data frame is not a thing. Uh, the R data frame is called vectors. Except I can't spell it good. Vectors. Okay, so in the data frame vectors, we are going to get all of the locations where the first column is in, the contents of the first column is in the first, the first item of keyword sets. Uh, oh, right. And this also has to be vectors. Okay, error, key error zero uh, is in keyword sets zero. Where is the error? Mm. Uh, I use R most of the time. What are the column names? Can you do vector head again? Uh, sure. I think that there actually aren't column names. So um, I use oh, vectors. Nope, that wasn't the issue. Um, I use R for tabular data. I prefer, I prefer, I mean, so pandas is basically a re-implementation of R um, in Python without all of the nice packages that are in R. Uh, and I, I like my data manipulation packages. They're very happy uh, and useful. Uh, so I'm wondering if it might be... Uh, oh, someone's saying it's vectors.iloc. I need to name the column. So it's not going to work by... Um, it's not going to work by index. I do not want to name the columns because there th are 301 columns. Um, and that's like, I, I don't need them to be named. I would prefer not to, because that's going to add additional like overhead every time I do this. Uh, vectors.head. Uh, so someone's saying vectors dot. Can I just give it the word? Will that work? Mm, okay, okay, so that does work. Let's see if this works. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, uh, Proud to be a programmer says, I mostly code in Python, should I learn R? Is it worth it? It depends. Um, if you're doing a lot of statistics, many statistical methods are, so R is a language for statistics and data visualization and data manipulation and data analysis specifically. Python is a more general purpose language that um, you can also do those things in. So if you're working a lot in statistics and data visualization and data analysis, then R can be useful to learn. Um, there's a lot of really nice quality of life tools built specifically for analysts and people who are doing um, you know, data science. So if you like nice quality of life tools, that can be helpful. Um, if you come from more of a software engineering background and you expect things to work in a software engineering way, um, R might be a little bit frustrating. It's very functional as a language. Um, that's not fair. Software engineering can be very functional, but it's not by default, especially object oriented. Um, that's not really the way it's set up. And it has some oddities that people don't love. So there is no native hashed function in R. Uh, but and one nice thing about R is if you also know C, you can manipulate um, R objects directly in C because R is a C language. Mm. Uh, someone is saying words instead of word inside the list comprehension. Let's see. Hmm. Uh, can you print what is in keywords sets? Yeah, absolutely. 
so it is a uh, list of lists where each list is the unique keywords in each forum post. Oh, right, and it's a list. I just finished saying it was a list. Uh, so these are the unique keywords in five different forum posts. Um, four different forum posts, and then the fifth one didn't have any keywords. All right, uh, Ned has a suggestion, let's see. Uh, Arun says, you love R as a language? I do like R. Uh, and the R community is super duper helpful. Um, I have a lot of friends uh, in the R community and it's, you know, it's a chill set of people. Uh, for the most part. Oh, oh, I think that works. I think that's what it's gonna be, Matt. Uh, let's check what's in test. Yeah, nice, excellent. That is what I am looking for. Um, hmm, although for some reason it's also gotten the first row that we never read in of the data set, which is deeply weird for each of these. Um, Okay, uh, I don't know what the, what this is. Is it a is it a tuple? Okay, I think it's a list. Hmm. Okay, I want this to be a. What is this? Uh, no, no D type is for the type of data in columns. I can't find out what type of data thing this is. Um. Uh, people are like, one more set of lock. One more set uh, after lock. Mm, that doesn't seem to have worked. I think, I think it works. I just don't know what uh, it is. Oh, um... My con says it's a series. It's a list of series. Uh, is there like, can I be like, is, is series, is that a built-in? Can I check that way? It's not, okay. Um, oh, type test. I read, said the word type, but I did not type it. Okay, it's a list. So it's a list of series. Uh, oh, it's a data frame. Oh, that's right, that's right. Okay, okay, okay. So it's a list of data frames. It's a list of rows from data frames, which makes sense. So what we need to do is take this and turn it into a matrix. Uh, someone's suggesting we flatten. Wouldn't that make a single long vector though? We're gonna flatter it. Oh, you're such a good uh, data type. Flatten the list. One more bracket in your previous approach. Um, okay, it's a series. Flatten the list keyword sets. Hmm. Okay. Um. It's time for Google. Uh, dear Google, how do I get a list of series to matrix? You know what? I would also be perfectly happy with a uh, uh, perfectly happy with the data frame here. Uh, <laughs> da, da, da. Uh, matrix S2 list. All right, oh, can we just do that? Um, import numpy as np. Can I do, was it as matrix or to matrix? Oh, just dot matrix. Dot matrix test. Let's see if this works. No, I did that, nope, it did not work. Uh, it was our error. Key error zero. 
Uh, during the handling of exception, another error occurred. MP dot matrix. Uh, convert data type to array, duplicate columns possible, values, self engine, maybe cast indexer. Okay, interesting. Um, folks are saying that I need another set of uh, Hmm. <laughs> you do that. That ain't right. That ain't right. That should be 300 by 1. Yeah, that's definitely not right. All right. I've gotten sort of a weird data set out. But okay, so what is in test zero? Let's take a look. Hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, so I think our part of our problem might be that we actually have uh, headers in here, and I don't think we want headers. Can I do? Is there a header equals false argument? There is not. Hmm. Passing a boolean to a header is an evaluate. Use header equals none for no header. Of course. When I skipped rows and I said one, did I accidentally? Guys, I skipped the second row and not the first row because I forgot that in Python, we index from zero. Just like normal humans count in the real world, right? Everyone starts counting with zero. Sorry, I don't think zero indexing is a uh, good programmer UX. All right, so we're rereading this in. I think we will have much more, uh, oh, excuse me, good and usable stuff after that. Um, All right, label n folds is not at index. Interesting, okay, so we're getting something else here. Uh, column zero have mixed type, specify D type option on import or set low memory to false, but we should still have a data frame, yeah. Yeah, okay, uh, and we've automatically been assigned numeric names, which I am fine with. Um, no, except we have dropped one of the dimensions, interestingly. Oh, no, we haven't, because we start counting from zero. Again, every time it gets me. Uh, okay, so... Vectors, dot lock, word. Interesting. So th it looks like the vectors dot lock no longer work, and I'm not entirely sure why that is. Let's double check. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, so this is where we were running into trouble. The label the is not in index. Oops. Do I need to do it like so? Integer is required. Key error the. Interesting. Okay, so now we're having trouble uh, getting in there. All right, and my Kuhn has uh, a suggestion. So let's see. So this looks like, oh. Uh, does this need to be on one row, on one line, or can it be on multiple lines? All right, so all words, no, this can't be in one line. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, okay, so this is, uh, for the words and keyword sets, 
for word in words, all word append words, vector dot index uh, dot is in all words. Um, let's try that with just uh, the first three and see how that goes. Uh, named vector is not defined. Oh, that's right, because I called it vectors. Mm. Name vector is not defined. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so what is this doing? Uh, all words dot append word. Okay, so we're going through our three uh, posts. And we're looking at each post. In each post, we're looking at each word. Uh, we are appending to all words. Hmm. Okay, so I think what we actually want to append is not the word. Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, so this should actually be outside of the loop. Uh, uh, and Shashank says that you can't do the search by the because the index for rows is integer based and not words. Okay, that makes sense. Um, All right, so this is going through. Sorry, I'm, I'm figuring it out in my head. Uh, I don't think this is going to work. So this is a list of all of the words in the first three uh, posts. Right? Um, and then this last line gives us um, information about the, so we're looking at the vectors, we're getting where the index is in all words, but now our index is numeric. So giving it an index that is a text string isn't going to work. Um, uh, my friend says, before you run this, set the index to vectors.index equals zero. Uh, Arun says, please transpose. I don't, like I, I want it to be 300 wide. Right, because each word is 300 long. All right, uh, so setting to vectors dot index. I gotcha, okay, so now we're saying, hey, the index is these words and I want you to look for those words. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, so actually, I probably only want to do this for one at a time. And then do the looping a little bit later. Yeah, okay, so now I have Yeah, okay, uh, so now I have uh, a list of all the words. I am going through the words in my set and adding all of those words to this empty vector. Um, then I am setting the index of vectors as that, uh, uh, as that is the row that has the words in it. And then I am getting the, um, all of the rows that have those words from my list of pre-trained vectors. Uh, so I'm actually gonna call this a function. I'm gonna call this, whoop, where'd it go? Uh, def 
vectors from post, and I'm going to say that we need the post, uh, da -da, post, and then from there, let's try to test it out with that same one. So vectors from post and then post, I think we did zero. So we should see more or less the same thing. Oh, right. Uh, except I forgot it. So it's keyword sets zero. Hmm. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, the words are still in the first column. Hmm. What did I change? I didn't return anything in this function. I just ran this code and returned nothing. Uh, oh, shoot. Uh, okay. Nope. Return. There we go. That's why my new function returns nothing. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so now we have, uh, somehow I have highlighted my background and made it gray and I don't know how I did that. Um, so now we have a function. Uh, let's get, let's tidy up our notebook a bit so that this will continue to work um, in the future. Get rid of that. Don't need that probably, don't need that. Okay, excellent. Um, so let's mark down, get vectors, get word vectors for keywords in post. Um, and then let's just as little cherry on the cake, I do have to go do stuff after this. Um, as a cherry on the cake, let's take the um, mean of each of those columns. Uh, so let me call this test vectors. Uh, and then, can I just do Is that gonna work? No, it absolutely is not gonna work. Maybe average? No, that also did not work. Uh, all right, uh, my human says uh, remove the zero column. Oh yeah, I see. Actually, I can just do that uh, once right after I read it in, so I'm not doing it every time I'm in the loop because I believe re-indexing is fairly uh, memory intensive, or at least it is an R, and because uh, Pandas is based on R, I'm assuming that it is also uh, memory intensive in Pandas. Set words as index rather than first row, first column. All right, uh, oh, there we go, so it's dot mean. Vectors dot mean. Thank you. Very helpful. A and we should have uh, a vector of length three hundred. Uh, that is our sentence embedding. Test out getting forum post embedding in the dumbest way possible. All right. Uh, so. We've done it. Um, we have done zero clustering. What we have done is we've gotten our, um, let's see. Oh, no, I don't want a code cell. I want a markdown cell. Uh, extract keywords. Set of keywords from each post. Um, so what we have done is we have written like eight lines of code, but they're very pretty. Uh, that 
uh, get the embeddings for a single forum post, uh, and then we have some functions that we can use and uh, make look a little bit better later on. Uh, Bubble Ride says, why is it gray? I've dragged and selected something I shouldn't have. Uh, yeah, that's on me. Uh, are you gonna take much longer? Oh yeah, it's gonna take a little bit. Um, and let me make this public so you guys can uh, check it out if you are interested. Uh, and I do have other work to do today and I've taken you know a little bit longer than I usually do in my life coding, but we had good momentum and I didn't want to uh, to lose that. So we have our embeddings. Um, next week we will work on taking those embeddings and doing clustering with them. Uh, and I'm hopeful that we should be able to pretty much just use these embed embeddings as is. Um, and I would not be shocked if uh, they didn't work amazingly given our weird document embedding uh, approach. So that's, you know, uh, something that we could potentially improve on and iterate on later on, but I want something that works a little bit first. And I just want to sort of compare it to the brown embeddings, uh, the brown cluster, sorry, that we did previously, which were not amazing. All right. Uh, thank you everybody for joining today. I hope this was uh, educational. I definitely enjoyed having a bunch of people to help me remember Python syntax, which I'm getting better on. I'm getting better on. I did remember uh, how to do list comprehension. So uh, I think I get a gold star for that from me. Gold star. Uh, I will see everybody again next Wednesday for the reading group. We are still reading the same paper we were reading last time. And it's been a week now. So it's it's gone. XLNet. Yeah, I think we're reading XLNet. Um, so we will pick back up with that. Uh, and I will see you guys then. Oh, no. Oh, no, I made an error. Uh, although it mysteriously still worked. Oh, that's right. Because the thing that had an error in it, the error uh, was just dropping that one column. Um, so I'm going to commit again with that fix. Uh, yeah, have a great weekend. Or if you're already in your weekend, enjoy it. Spend some time relaxing, um, you know, hydrate. Uh, and I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye. Thanks for joining.